Hey everyone, this is another quick video with techniques you can use to more quickly bring clarity and understanding to your stakeholders and developers. For this video, I'll be talking about three ways to visually explain interfaces that are really dependent on the scope of the change or changes being made. They are mockups, which are typically used for making changes to existing interfaces, wireframes, which are used to help think through new interfaces, and prototypes that typically help everyone think through more complex interactions. Rather than try to break down every tool possible for these three techniques, I'll stick to the tools that I currently use, have used, or have worked with people that use them. First up is the mockup. Sometimes requirements might dictate change to an interface, and the best way to show those changes is to show those changes. There's a common phrase, a picture is worth a thousand words, in this case, you are really creating a picture instead of writing a thousand words. Mockups are typically changes to or additions of elements such as buttons, text, colors, icons, and so forth, but aren't really full page redesigns. My all time favorite tool for quick mockups is Snagit from TechSmith. You can screenshot an interface and literally cut and paste elements from the screen and move them around. You can also add new elements as long as they are shapes or text based or if you have an image of the element handy. This tool is easy and fast if you're in a hurry, also great for doing call outs on a screen if you just want to point things out to people on an interface. PowerPoint is also pretty good at mocking things up or calling things out if you have an existing screenshot since it has the ability to add most shapes and text on a screen. Photoshop can also achieve solid mockups, however it has a high learning curve and cost. So I wouldn't invest time and money in Photoshop unless you want to use it for more advanced activities as well. Number two is wireframes. Wireframes typically represent net new interfaces and are extremely valuable in making decisions on where things will eventually end up on a screen. It's easy to say you want a new page that has A, B, and C and does X, Y, Z. However, until you see it and try putting everything in place, it's hard to anticipate how sensible the ask is. Wireframes help you see what you are missing and what things don't make sense before a lot of time is spent on development. You can share wireframes with end users, stakeholders, and developers to get agreement on placement, features, language, and so forth. Low fidelity wireframes are what most people imagine when the term wireframe is used. These are truly just wires and frames to determine placement and organization. These are most valuable when you're trying to get feedback on what needs to be available and, and prevents spending too much time talking about the nuances of colors, font, styles, which can sometimes get into unproductive rabbit holes. As you've probably guessed, if there's a low fidelity wireframe, then there's also a high fidelity wireframe. High fidelity wireframes help stakeholders get an idea of what the final product will look like and are also valuable in making decisions before the development team puts in too much work. As a business analyst, more than likely you'll be applying company branding and style guides instead of just adding your own artistic flair. My favorite wireframing tool is Pencil by Evelis because you can make them look like a pencil sketch and keep people focused on content instead of colors and things that might be out of the immediate scope of concern for a business analyst. It's also open source, meaning it's free, which is pretty cool. Outside of that, pretty much any tool where you can add rectangles and text would work as a wireframing tool. Draw.io is also free and connects to Google and Microsoft Cloud Drives and has wireframing templates and shapes that you can start out with. Visio is also great for wireframing, but isn't available on Macs and isn't free. And I've also used Lucid Charts, which is basically a, a paid version of draw.io. Number three is prototypes. Prototypes are one of the most powerful techniques that most business analysts do not use. Similar in function to wireframes, but these allow you to walk through a task flow as you would in a live system to help you understand things that don't make sense, things that could make it more efficient, and also get feedback before anything gets developed. I'm a huge fan of rapid prototyping, which essentially means creating a non fully functional version of what you intend to develop, allowing stakeholders and end users to try it out, find issues, adjust, test again, and go through as many cycles as necessary until you get a design you are very satisfied with. Then you begin development. If you're an analyst in the agile world, this is definitely something you need to consider for your tool belt. Prototypes can be made with paper, which for some could be the most rapid way to prototype. However, if, you're, if your artistic ability is lacking, you may not feel super confident in doing this. I have seen some pretty elaborate paper prototypes for different types of interfaces, but in truth, I would have been much faster using a tool to accomplish the task. <clears throat> My go-to tool is Adobe Experience Designer or Adobe XD, partially because I was already using Adobe Creative Cloud, so I didn't have to spend any extra money. Um, I believe there's also currently a free version with limited functionality as well. 
I love it. You can create prototypes either with a low fidelity style or high fidelity um, style very quickly, and you can easily make them feel like an actual website. You can simulate the prototype from the app itself, or you can publish it to the cloud and let your whole team access it, make comments, and you can update as you go. There are lots of great tutorials available and it's constantly being updated with new and useful features. Also, if you're already a Photoshop or Illustrator user, you can easily move elements, elements into your design in Experience Designer. Sketch is the industry standard prototyping tool for web designers and user experience designers. And, I, and I've used it and it works quite well, but it is limited to the Mac operating system at the moment. There are other prototyping tools out there, but I haven't used most of them, but you can Google prototyping tools or lists of the best prototyping tools and find out what might work for you. Okay, that was my quick run through of three ways to use visual modeling to help explain and develop requirements or user stories. I know I didn't get super deep into the specifics of how to do them, so I'll include some good intro tutorials specifically for wireframing and prototyping in the description. As always, if you have additional questions, leave them for me in the comments and I'll answer you there, or I'll create a new video to answer you more specifically. So subscribe to see those questions get answered. And thanks for watching.